Uh, let's just start off by talking about the actual risks that uh, lie ahead for Africa. Should we see another dramatic shakeup in the Eurozone? And obviously this really has to do with the fact that uh, Europe is still a very important player when it comes to trade out of the continent. You, you know, I mean, um, frankly, uh, Europe is still very much important for Africa. Uh, the good thing, though, is to take it in, in context. Uh, in the last decade before the first uh, economic crisis, Africa was certainly growing um, at 5.7% um, on an annual basis. Um, it fell to about 1.9 during that crisis in 2009, but quickly uh, went up to 3.8%, and 2011 ended at 4.8%. And for 2012 and 2013, the forecast is 5.3% at 5.6%. Now, what we see as a possible impact of a Eurozone crisis, if it turns into a recession, is a shave off of at least 1.7% from that growth. Yeah. I looked at within the context of lower growth levels in other continents, I think Africa is still doing well, but it must watch out uh, for the serious, uh, uh, serious uh, deleterious impact that um, uh, a, a crisis ridden Europe could have on its growth. Oh, yeah, Geli, when it comes to intra-Africa trade, and this is a drum that we've been beating for a very long time, the truth is that intra-Africa trade only accounts for 12% of total trade. When you compare that to the numbers that we see out of Latin America, where you see 35% of trade occurring within that space and also in Europe 70% of trade occurring within uh, within Europe is in Europe surely we need to bring this a number up higher as I mentioned we've been talking about this for a long time can we do it in 2012 can we start putting the right processes in place I think that um, you know the, the political rhetorics on uh, the necessity for economic integration on the continent is going to need to be backed by bold uh, move on the part of the political leaders. And I think the economics uh, really should drive uh, the, the decision. Um, Africa looked at as a continent is a nearly $2 trillion uh, market. It is a market of 1 billion people, frankly speaking, that is an incentive because what, it, what ultimately economics is about market size. And I think that uh, the leaders of the continent can then walk the talk and, um, you know, by pursuing the right kinds of uh, policy integration as well as physical integration uh, uh, and also aligning uh, the institutional and regulatory systems in order to create uh, the kind of market that would yeah. be very attractive and ultimately end up uh, in a win-win situation for all. So I do agree with you. Enough of the rhetorics in terms mm -hmm. of the political aspiration, but the need to just move yeah with the domestic politics as well as the economic policy at home aligning with the regional integration yeah. ideals. So Obi Ageli, when you look at some of the, the difficult processes, cross-border processes that we see and also the regulatory environment, uh, trade settlement issues that we see all the time coming through, I mean we see the East African community, things are starting to look slightly better within that region. Is it up to the African Union, is it up to the World Bank, is it up to SADC itself to actually start putting the right trade processes in place and ensure that each uh, government adheres to them to start creating this growth that we speak of? No, I think that it, sent, it first starts with um, the domestic politics. A nation must think that um, economic integration uh, with the neighbors uh, would be beneficial to it for it to move forward. I mean, a policy, you know, ultimately falls in the realm of politics. And so domestically, you need to build a credible base and legitimacy for economic integration. And then when you've built that, then you become a part of a sub-regional bloc like the SADC or the EAC or, or the ECOWAS as the case may be. And within these regional economic communities, they develop common, 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 common ideas of the, of the most critical of integration that they want to pursue. And uh, we've seen that uh, within the EAC and now uh, increasingly as it uh, straddles across uh, uh, SADC and, and the other uh, blocks and yeah. uh, to create a, a common market, Comessa, that 
shows that clearly the countries see the benefits of yeah. uh, regional uh, cooperation. Uh, we also know that the African Union has been talking about introducing a continental free trade agreement by 2017. That seems quite far away to me because we know that we want to plan to boost intra-Africa trade uh, by 30% over the next decade or so. Should this not be happening imminently? Well, you know, I mean, the faster it happens, the better. But rather uh, that they, 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 they took their time to really get it all lined up properly. I mean, you need a mix of things to uh, really make regional integration work. Uh, the, the competencies and the, and the institutions and the political uh, legitimacy, as I said earlier, and the voice of the citizens as a part of it, and actually making the economic agents in other words, the private sector is important in the entire conversation. So whether it is being pursued domestically or being done within the rubric of the um, regional economic communities or being supported by friends of the continent, uh, uh, including my institution, what matters is that the 2017 uh, be a date with history. Uh, one last question. Is this going to ensure that if we start increasing intra-Africa uh, trade, that this is going to ensure that we protect ourselves from any shocks, economic shocks that we see on a global level. I totally agree with that. I mean, frankly speaking, as I said earlier, the, the issue of markets matter. And so while the rest of the world is discovering Africa, Africa might as well <laughs> discover Africa. Uh, the opportunities on the continent are huge. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, if you are a, a, a someone who's taking a stake on this continent and you're not looking beyond the borders of the particular country you're in, yeah. that's a strategy that's not perishing.